Welcome to the Christmas Day 2022 edition of a 7 quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. I recorded this video yesterday and it's all about looking at ways to allow for expansion and movement of the boiler on the mountings when the engine is in steam. This first method would work but the job didn't go as planned and I made a thorough mess of it. To make up for this there is a paint drying sequence at the end. I have a much better idea which I will show in the next video. To be perfectly honest the only good thing about these boiler mountings is the quality of the welding and this was done by the customer. I'm checking the sizes and all the holes are a different size and the worst thing is the holes through the angle are not in the same place relative to the holes in the metal bar. I will carry on regardless because this is quite a good lesson in how not to do a job. First of all do not do this job on Christmas Eve when your head may be elsewhere. If you look closely you will see that the holes in the bar are not in the middle and they're not the same distance from each other it's a bit of a mess to start with. So I've got nothing to lose this will make a very good tutorial. You may have guessed it what I intend to do is elongate these holes into slots and by doing that the boiler will be able to move back and forth. I've mentioned this before in a previous video, I once built a 5 inch gauge Midland spinner locomotive and there was a problem with the boiler, it fitted into the smoke box fine but the back of the boiler was right up against one of the frame stretchers so there was no room or any way to accommodate expansion. Here I'm fitting a 3 8 diameter slot drill into my collet which in turn is fitted into the milling machine. The parts are in the machine vise but I need to put some packings underneath them because I don't really want the milling cutter to remove part of my machine vise. This slot drill is not worn, it's very sharp so I'm hoping it's going to do the job. I'm a little bit concerned that when the milling cutter meets the hole in the angle which isn't in the middle of the hole in the bars it's going to wander about. Here we go then, I should be using lubricant I know but it makes it very difficult when you're making a video when there's oil splashing about everywhere. So I'm doing it dry because really I know this isn't going to work. Normally I am the eternal optimist and my glass is always half full but in this case there's no liquid in the glass at all. I do have a plan B in mind if this goes wrong which is just as well. What I tried to do was centralise the hole in the steel angle by pushing the milling cutter through the hole to start with but once it hit the hole it started to wander about. Just in case you're curious the speed of this video is four times normal speed. The chippings that come flying off during this milling operation are very hot and very sharp so eye protection is essential. Because of the increased speed of the video footage it really does look like I'm doing this job too fast but in reality it was a lot slower than this. I try not to blame the tools that I use. I don't have an expensive milling machine because I'm trying to duplicate the type of machine that beginners would have. This milling machine is a Nairock milling machine which is Korean spelt backwards and to be fair it's done a lot of work and it's done a lot of good work quite unlike what you're seeing at the moment. In this clip the milling cutter has come through the side as I thought it might do because none of these holes were in the centre. To finish this sequence I attempted to straighten up all the slots and to be honest it was a slight improvement but the whole job was terrible and I can't live with things like this. There are two schools of thought. These parts are not going to be visible when the locomotive is put back together but the point is I will always know that the job is bad. As I mentioned at the beginning I knew this wasn't going to work but I thought I'd try it just in case a miracle happened. But sadly no, the job went from bad to worse. And all I can say now is here endeth the first lesson and the word endeth is the third person singular simple present indicative form of end. And that's enough of that, it's time for take two. Using a 5 eighths of an inch diameter end mill I removed all the horrible bit that you just see me working on. 
and because the parts were clamped together in the machine vise, this time without any packing because it's not needed, the parts were much more accurate than they were in the first place. Although I must confess that the slots are not all the same as each other because I followed the original holes for the position. This really doesn't matter though because I am making a flexible fixing. What I need to make are some parts that travel in the slots which allows for the contraction and expansion of the boiler. At this stage I was thinking of some really complicated ways of making parts to slide up and down the slots. And most of the ideas that I have involve the use of hexagon bar. I also considered this, why not use something that's already made, like an M10 bolt? But the boiler mounting does have to be slightly more complicated than this. If you watch the next episode, you'll see what I do. I toyed with the idea of making some T-nuts. And here, using a commercial T-nut, you can see what I'm thinking. But owing to it being Christmas Eve and not having any bar stock of the right size and unable to get any, I abandoned that idea. What I am going to do, though, is paint these parts first. As usual, I'm using etching primer, and this is really good stuff. I buy this self-etched grey primer from a company called Auto Paint Northern, and the details are on the can. And I find this particular self-etched grey primer to be about the best I've ever used. Once painted, I wiped away the paint from the bearing surface. And while this paint was drying, I went through the door to the outer part of the workshop and painted the smoke box and chimney. You've already seen me do this, but the first coat was special high temperature paint. This stuff is HMG Satin Black, and using the heat resistant paint as a primer seems to be a good idea, and it works for me. Here's a close up of the can, and yes, to the viewer who asked, it is C71. I finished this voiceover at 12 noon on Christmas Day, the 25th of December 2022. And as a special Christmas bonus, this is paint drying in real time on the 24th of December 2022. That is it for this episode. Merry Christmas. Now I need to go into the house and wrap some presents for my family. Christmas dinner today takes place at 3pm. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.